my channel. Today we're doing a home DIY video on mirrored furniture. I refinish these extremely affordable pieces to have the mirrored furniture look. I absolutely love the outcome of this project. If you guys would like to learn how to remake this, then stay tuned. Starting with the furniture piece, I got these three pieces from Target. They're actually three separate pieces that I stacked on top of each other. You can see that the top piece is from here to here, and then you have the second section, which is from here to here, and then you have the two pull-out drawers on the bottom here. I was definitely going for more of like the built-in look. However, you can see that the top one, maybe I should have installed the doors upside down or something because I have the handles all the way to the top. So I'm going to actually have to drill holes to move that down. Starting with materials, we're going to go ahead and start with these knobs. I found these from Home Depot and I just thought that it would really go well with the mirrored look that I have going on in this room. The mirrors, I got them custom cut. Lowe's actually custom cuts mirrors and they sell them there. So I just went there, gave them the sizes and they cut everything down for me. For the trim, I got these sheets of balsa wood from Michaels and they are a little bit softer so it's easier to cut so I do recommend them. I'm going to use this leftover paint for the trim, but you can definitely use spray paint for a faster process. For tools, we'll need a X-Acto knife for cutting, a mechanical pencil for marking the wood. You specifically need a mechanical so that way you can mark it for drilling the mirror as well. Ruler as a straight edge and for measuring. Measuring tape. For the adhesive, I am using Gorilla Glue. Make sure when you're picking out a glue for this project, it needs to say that it is mirror safe. If you use just any glue, it can destroy the backing of the mirror and we definitely do not want that. To make the holes in the cabinet as well as the mirrors, I'm using my drill. I need a drill head for removing the hardware for drilling wood and also one for drilling the mirror. Make sure when you're using the mirror one, you're gonna have to tape it down first and also put water on there. That way the mirror does not shatter when you're drilling it. I also have a couple pieces of scrap wood just to hold the mirror and also so I can drill right through it without any issues. A cutting mat for when I'm cutting with the X-Acto knife and a brush for painting. To start, I'm going to remove all the hardware from the doors. Be sure to put a little screw in so that way you have something to pull on when you're trying to open these doors without the hardware on it. Next, I'm going to go ahead and measure the doors and all the different parts on the cabinet here. So that way I know what size to cut the mirror as well as how long I need to cut the trim for each piece. To add the holes for the knobs on that top cabinet, we're gonna have to measure a couple things here. We need to measure the distance from the bottom cabinet from that line down to the actual knob. We're gonna do the same distance going across and up. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and measure the distance here. Make sure when you're measuring it, you're doing it from the middle of the hole since that is where you will drill versus at the end of the hole. So make sure you're looking at the middle. Now we're going to go ahead and mark that same distance on the top so that way we can draw a line across. Next we're going to measure the distance from the middle of the cabinet so we can duplicate that on the top and we know where on that line we're going to actually drill the hole. Now to drill the actual hole, make sure again you want to make sure you have a little screw in there so that way you don't close the doors and then the door is stuck and there's no way for you to reopen it just because you don't have anything to pull on. And since I'm changing these two knobs instead of a handle, I'm going to have to drill a hole in between the two holes for the actual drawers on the bottom. So I'm going to measure the distance between the two holes. Again, like I said, make sure when you're measuring, you're measuring from the middle of the hole, not the beginning or end of the hole. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to mark the middle of where the measurement is. That way I know where to drill the new hole. To mark the mirror for drilling the hole, you're going to need to push out all the lead in the mechanical pencil. 
and I'm going to hold the mirror down and s stick the lead through the hole so that way it marks the back of the mirror. Then you're going to stick the tape and repeat that same step over again. Just a helpful tip as you're marking the holes, just make sure you label each mirror piece so you know which one is which. You want to just make sure that you have the right pieces when you're gluing it on there. To drill the hole for the mirror, I'm going to change it to the glass drilling head. And like I said, we're going to need some water, so I just have plain water here. I'm going to go ahead and just dab some water on top of where I marked it and then we can go ahead and start drilling. Make sure when you're doing this guys you have some goggles on so that way you have something that's protecting your eyes just in case anything shatters or if any of the debris flies up. It shouldn't fly up if you have the water on there because that usually keeps the debris down. It also prevents it from cracking and shattering as well. Once the hole is there, go ahead and just use one of the screws. Just make sure it goes all the way through. Once I was done drilling all the holes for the mirror, I am now applying glue on the back of the mirror. I'm just putting it all over the mirror. Make sure all places are covered so that way it really holds on very well. To position the mirror onto the doors correctly, what I like to do is I'll actually utilize the little screw there. So I'll place it up against it and then in order to position it, I actually position the drilled hole with the actual hole on the door and then just push the screw through to kind of hold it there. Next, I'm going to move it around and just make sure all the lines are aligned correctly. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch it into the proper screw and screw the actual knob onto the door. Make sure to hold it in place for about a minute just to make sure it grabs hold and it doesn't slide around. So here is the first option for the cabinets. You can leave it like this if you like, but I'm going to go ahead and add trim to it. For the trim, I drew a diagram for you guys so that we have a better idea of what pieces you need. The diagram on the right side, it is based off of the size for that wood, so you know how to cut it to save wood. It does have a diagram that is color-coded here, so you know where each piece goes and how many you're going to need. Feel free to pause the screen so you guys can have a better look at the diagram. Uh, you can see here everything is cut out for you. The parts that have a line across it are just parts that we're not going to use. You can shred it or keep it, whatever you want to do with it. And everything is sized based off of the size of wood here, which is the balsa wood, like I said, I got from Michaels. This is the actual tag on it, so you guys can see what you're looking for. The size of this is 4 by 36 inches. To cut the trim, I do suggest that you guys actually draw out all the lines for cutting out the trim first on all of the pieces of wood before you start cutting so that way you can make sure you have all the pieces ready. I kind of did it the other way so I ended up cutting something wrong and I had to go back and purchase more wood for the project. Once you're done lining everything, you can get the X-Acto knife to start cutting everything out. I do suggest using a straight edge. And whenever you're going against the grain of the wood, I would actually go on a couple cuts versus going one deep cut. If you are going uh, with the grain of the wood, you can see you can just do one straight cut. It's also easier to do a straight line when you're going with the grain of the wood as well. And you can see it's pretty simple. I didn't even use a straight edge for this, but if you don't have a still hand, definitely use that straight edge so you don't have any... Um, curvy lines or anything that's crooked. To cut the corners we want a 45 degree angle so I have my cutting mat it has these lines for guides so I'm actually going to use that and, to, and do two marks and then draw a line down and cut it down with an exacto knife. If you do not have a mat another option is you can actually draw out a perfect square on a piece of paper and then go ahead and draw a line from corner to corner and you can use that as a guide as well. Once all the edge pieces are cut out, we're going to go ahead and paint them white. You're going to need two coats of the white paint on there. What I did was I painted one coat and then I painted just the outside edges. 
If you have time, you can definitely paint the back side as well. You can kind of see it against the mirror, but it's really not too noticeable because it is such a thin piece of wood. But if you want to, you can definitely paint the back side of it as well. I got a little bit lazy, so I just decided to paint the front and the edges for it. So to glue it on, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna use the same adhesive and do a line across the entire piece. Then you just place it on the mirror. Like I said, this glue is pretty good. It actually holds it really well. So once you put it on there, it's that's it. Like it's pretty much on there. So you don't really have to work too much on that. I do recommend putting the bottom piece and then the top piece and then do the sides. So that way you have everything evened out. Since you have the 45 degree angle on that, it'll actually click right in there once you do the other sides. Next we're going to do the bigger panels. We're going to glue it and then put it in right against the existing panels in the middle. Which brings us to the second look. So if you guys like this look, you can definitely stop right now and just keep it like this. To do the crisscross part, I'm going to use the half an inch strips and I'm going to measure it from corner to corner. I want to even it out so that way it's flat against the top and the bottom and then I'll make two marks so I can have the cutting marks for it. Just a close up look, you can see that I'm matching it from the corner and then I'll put a mark on the side and then I'll do the same on the bottom as well. And then I'm just going to use an X-Acto knife and a straight edge to cut those lines. To do the crossover piece, we're not actually crossing over the wood. We're going to cross it over to measure it, but we're going to cut out the piece where the initial piece is passing through. So that way it's going to be flush. So we're just going to meet the corners. The top part, I'm not going to match to the corner because I have the knob there. So I'm going to get as close as I can. It doesn't look bad at all because once all of them are the same, it just kind of uniforms all together. Once we have all the pieces, we're going to go ahead and just paint all of them white again before we glue it onto the mirror. Once it's dry, we can go ahead and apply the glue and attach it onto the mirror. Make sure when you're putting the glue onto these thin pieces, you're not globbing it on there. Otherwise, when you push down on it against the mirror, you're going to have some spill over onto the sides and then you're going to have to remove that later. So just to kind of minimize the extra work, try to just put a little bit of glue, nothing too much and nothing globbed on there. So that concludes today's home DIY video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's little tutorial. I wanted to take some time out just to thank each and every single one of you for the thumbs up, for the comments, for subscribing. I appreciate each and every one of you for your support. Other than that, if you guys like today's tutorial, be sure to give me a thumbs up. It does help me, give me an idea of what type of videos you guys like. And if you have not joined the family here, I make videos every week and would love to show you guys. Other than that, have a good day. Bye!